you know, it's pretty horrible out. Yeah, it just takes sometimes a few minutes to see somebody's off a little bit. But I've already started the recording, so we can actually stop the meeting. Kevin, are you yeah, yes, Kevin. He's muted. Kevin, you have to unmute. Sorry. Hey, how are you? Hi. Hey, Kevin. Hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Because, Drew, I don't think I've ever met you before. I'm Deanna Carlson, the new first select man. So, all nice right. Pleased to meet you. And Drew, I'm Katie. New party commissioner. Hello. How do you do? So okay, so we're gonna start the meeting right now. Uh, we're gonna start with the election of officers. So the first nomination would be for chairman. Um. So do I have any nominations for the office of chair? Does anyone want to nominate someone, Kevin? I'll nominate Nancy Davis. <laughs> okay. any, any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of Nancy Davis as chair of the Parking Commission, uh, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. One, two, three. Aye. Nancy, you get to vote for yourself. <laughs> it's unanimous. Thank you. And um, the next nomination is for the office of secretary. Do I have a, a nomination for secretary? I'd like to nominate Kevin. Okay. Any other nominations for the office of secretary? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, Kevin Carl for the office of secretary for the parking commission, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye, it looks like it's unanimous. All right, so the elections of officers are done. Nancy, welcome as chairman. And Thank I you. Am handing the reins over to you um, for the remainder of the meeting. Wonderful. Head out. So good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for joining, Deanna. And we, um, well, I'll just officially, I mean, I know Stacy called the meeting to order. I'll officially call it to order again at 7 4 p.m. On uh, Wednesday, it is what, March 6th? Yes. Um, and I thought we should also introduce Katie, because I don't know if the group has really uh, met her. Well, this is my first time. So I'm Katie. I've lived in town. Well, you probably saw from my resume my whole life. And uh, both my father and brother were on the parking commission. So it's kind of in my blood. <laughs> Katie Franco O'Neill, correct? correct. Yeah. Well, welcome. We look forward to uh, you. having you participate in our in our parking uh, deliberations and and journey to make uh, parking a, a kinder, general, gentler place in New Canaan. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I know we've got uh, in terms of the well. Do we want to approve the minutes first from uh, the February meeting? Did you all take a look at them? They they were fine with me. Do I have a a, a, a vote to approve the minutes? For somebody to make Second. a motion? Drew, okay. And yeah, Kevin, second. seconds. Mm -hmm. Those minutes are approved. And uh, we are really, um, it's great we that we've got Tiger. One, yeah, we only have one appeal. Um, I asked for your suggestions. Um, Put on the bottom that the appealing must appeal uh, appear at the meeting. Um, obviously, he has not come, or uh, I don't see him on Zoom. So um, you know, we can circle back to that if you want later. Maybe we'll give him another opportunity throughout the meeting to pop in. Um, but since he's not here, we can move on to Tiger, who will be here to you know present to you some parking projects and Nancy I'm sorry for jumping uh, oh that's okay yeah no I didn't have I didn't have the agenda in front of me so I see that the viol the appeals would have been um first and then and then Tiger but uh yeah. Mr. Gar Garzon is not with us um as of yet so I think we should begin 
Tiger. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's a long time coming um, for me to be in here. Um, I think it's a good thing. And then if you have any questions, I have a short presentation to kind of run through where we are and where we're headed and try to answer some of the questions that um, I follow. I follow the, the commission afterwards. So either I sit and listen during or I listen to it on my way into work. So the questions that you have during that time, hopefully I'll answer during my presentation. If you've got any others, just feel free um, to uh, to shout them out and ask them. Um, so like I said, I have a, I don't know, probably 10 slides or something like that. So I'll share my screen and we'll figure out if uh, everybody can uh, can see it. Um, can everybody see that? Hey, can you make it bigger? It's about as big as I can go, Bob. Okay. Right there. Okay. Yeah, there, there you go. go. That's it. That's great. Sorry, I'm on a I'm on a laptop, so I'm on two screens, so it's a little bit hard. But if you can uh, if you can see this, uh, we'd be good. So, um, kind of topics of the discussion, uh, we'll go through the parking lots that we have and the parking lots that you guys are uh, kind of uh, in charge of. We'll go through Locust, Lumberyard, the train station, Morse Court, what's happening on Elm Street, and then a little bit on signage and striping just to kind of clear up some misconceptions or uh, answer some questions that everybody might have. And uh, again, if there's a question, feel free. It's not going to um, not going to hurt the hurt the presentation or hurt my flow at all. Um, this picture is the 9-11 Memorial. Um, we're, we're virtually done with it now. The, uh, it has railing around the outside of it. The safety railing, this came in right before the safety railing, but it's kind of our way to kind of improve the area. The bottom right is what it looked like prior um, to our work. And the upper left is where it is now with, again, a safety railing because there's a drop off there. But uh, I think it's now a destination for people. Um, the Beautification League helped us out because they came in, put in four benches on it, um, and then did all the plantings with our highway crew and the parks guys did all the irrigation. So worked out really well. I think it's actually, you know, like I said, it's kind of now a destination for the town versus something that was uh, starting to fall into disrepair. Um, so again, you know, this is kind of what it looks like now. It's very pretty, I, I, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so as far as parking lots go, we have 71 parking lots in town at 35 separate locations. Um, this is our parking map. It's, skewed to the side only because it won't fit up and down it's kind of a little awkward but this inset right here is basically all your purview right so this all of this in here is pretty much yours um and you have kind of 19 parking lots um in nine different locations so you got train station has three talmadge hill's got 10 um richmond hill center school morse court park street park playhouse and pine if i missed anything please let me know but it's kind of you're all centered right in the middle there um, in the downtown and the rest of them are either associated with a park, with a building or a school um, uh, or what have you. Um, but I'll kind of walk you through where we are with uh, the Locust lot. Uh, this year, Tiana told us that we're paving it at least uh, to make it so that it's safe. Um, so it's a quite expansive lot. What we're, what we're looking to be doing at this time, at this juncture is just to make it black and restripe it um, with the handicapped spaces, as you see down, down in the left-hand corner. We are at present looking through different, different techniques as to what should happen on the lot. The lot's quite old. Um, so we're trying to determine the best technique to uh, give us some time on, on, on this lot as far as the pavement goes. At that point in time, we're not looking at changing anything with the parking layout at all, striping will remain the same, um, numbering will remain the same, and your overall number of spaces will remain the same. We'll continue to have the uh, the islands in between. I am asking a landscape architect to give us a little bit of screening around the outside, but that's more for um, questions of trying to break up the heat island effect and to screen the lot from neighbors, surrounding neighbors, that because we're getting uh, some cl complaints that uh, we don't have enough screening around it. Um, and then as far as the, uh, the lumberyard lot itself, lumberyard lot is quite, a, quite um, oh. go ahead. Sorry. Um, what, do you have a date, a target date in 2024 that you're going to be paving the locust lot? So 
we're hoping to do that sooner than later. I'd like to tackle that one first, right? So we have the three lots in play, the lumber yard, the locust lot, and the railroad lot. Um, the uh, So I have to wait for some funding for the railroad lot and for the lumber yard lot, but I have money for locust. So the monies are in the budget at present and they should come available between May and June. The railroad lot will come available before the, uh, the, the uh, lumber yard lot will. But I also don't want to take all three out at one time because you, 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 it'll decimate you, right? So we have to do one and then another and then another. Locust shouldn't take us that long for the techniques that we want to employ uh, at the time. Shouldn't take us that long, a couple, three days maximum, and then uh, you're in business. Um, and then we can focus on the other lots. I'd like to take the railroad station lot out during the summer, uh, July specifically, late July, early August, and then go over to the lumberyard lot last. So we'll have Locust and the railroad in play before we go to the, the railroad lot. And the, the railroad lot itself, we're looking at just the upper portion. So we did the lower portion uh, approximately 12 years ago, let's say. Uh, it's in very good shape. It's got some cracking in it. We'll take care of that with crack seal um, and take care of the, the cracking so the, the, the lot itself will last longer. But this upper portion hasn't been done uh, in well over 20 years. I've been here for 23, 24. We've never touched it. So the um, this stretch will have to be redone. And uh, the thought is that the majority of your commuters could still use the lower portion of the lot and we could take the upper portion out of the lot of the lot out of service for approximately a week and take care of it. Um, if I can get it done right after the railroad lot at the close of the summer, we'll do that. That's our, that's, you know, that would be a nice plan. I just have to make sure that the timing works between uh, each of the contractors. Um, and then the last one, again, is a railroad lot, as we spoke of, the only change here would be a little bit more defined on the, on the disabled spacing. This is an older inset um, because it doesn't show the uh, the new work in the uh, for the 9/11 memorial or the new brick sidewalk or granite curbing or anything like that around the uh, the outside. But again, um, it won't take that long for this lot. It's basically a two day operation. It's a one day to mill it, one day to pave it, and then come in and stripe it. They'll come in and stripe it usually about seven days after paving, only because you want to get the oils out of the out of the pavement like to get one rain so that there's a little bit of, so we don't stripe it directly after. We stripe it directly after, the car tires will carry the oils onto the white paint and um, dull them up to the point where, you know, you'd have to restripe a lot sooner. So if we wait about seven days, safety markings will come in at night and do it so there won't be any disruption during the day. So it's in essence, it's a two to three day disruption in and out, um, given that there's no weather in between. Um, and Good then- question. Sure. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the the striping, the 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 geometry won't change. So, I'm just curious, is the width the same across all these lots? The width of each normal space? Yes. Though I would, I haven't measured them, but I would have to say, based upon history, no. If you want okay. to go through and change the geometry of the spaces, that's a different discussion. If you'd like to change the geometry. Most of the concerns I've heard about are from Morse Court, not necessarily the other lots, to be quite honest. And we did measure Playhouse, the, Playhouse and Park Street for sure. Yeah, Playhouse, Playhouse and Park Street, a little, yeah. little bit different animals. Um, mm -hmm. And those are the the upper Park Street lot at present not in play. The, the Playhouse lot is um, the Playhouse lot uh, because of the work at the at the uh, at the Playhouse itself. We've got to put in a um, we have plans for a pedestrian ramp leading from the Playhouse lot down through the alley, uh, which is in between Le Pen Quotidien and, and the Playhouse itself. And that leads you out into Elm Street. And we'll be able to get in approximately three to four disabled spaces along the back wall of the Playhouse, directly adjacent to the to the ramp, which will be a, an accessible ramp. Um, and at that point in time, the striping will change a little bit. We have to move the compactor that's uh that's there at present because that'll be in the way of the ramp the compactor will go into a couple of spaces um next to the staircase uh that leads from the two that leads from the upper lot down to the lower lot and then we can look to restripe the rest of it if there's a concern there we can try to uh try to address that 
um, at that time. Yeah, my, my concern on that one, and if it applies to the others, is you know not that I want to accommodate larger and larger vehicles, but let's face it, everybody drives <laughs> a, mm -hmm. a mount, monster SUV, and most of the time they can't <clears throat> seem to squeeze in or don't try hard enough. So I just wondered if there was any wiggle room on on well, the margin. You know, you see sometimes the stripes have a little box between the spaces you can, and so well places. you can do the hollywood spacing that's a hollywood okay. called the hollywood okay. space um yeah. you know they're in home depot they're in stop and shop they're in others but you're going to lose you're going to lose a lot of room okay those are predominantly for people who have shopping carts things like that if we go to the standard space which is a nine by twenty by PNC mm -hmm. regulations you're likely going to lose parking them parking spaces we can certainly do a a look and we are looking at the locust lot and the lumberyard lot for that, but at present we weren't looking to change them, only because we don't want to drop the number of spaces for you. Um, mm -hmm. There is a there is the thought too that if I if I go that route, I've got to go back to the planning and zoning commission for um, approvals. Right now we're working with the planner to find out exactly whether or not we would have to if we change the uh, if we keep the same configuration we don't have to do anything. If we change the configuration, then we likely would have to go to back to P and Z for approval for that site plan. So that's that's another that's another consideration um, at present. Um, the one that we are looking at um, is the Morse Court lot only because Maria, my town engineer and I went out and some of the spaces are seven and a half feet wide and they're adjacent to an eight and a half foot wide, adjacent to an eight foot wide. This lot, um, we've never paved it. I've never paved it. I've restriped it, but we've restriped it in kind. So whatever was the layout at the time, we striped what the layout was. So we are looking at this configuration to see if we can come up with uh, something better. But again, um, going from a seven and a half to a nine, that's a foot and a half difference. There's And the, the lot is bounded by buildings and sidewalks and driveways. So there's not no room to grow. So you can't grow the lot. So if we start to grow the spaces, we lose spaces. So right now we're doing a we're doing an analysis. Maria um, gave me a couple three analyses today that we have to review, and then we'll come back to the commission at that point in time to decide um, if that's an avenue that the commission would like to take um, on the restriping. I got a quote to restripe it, but it really comes down to if I add a, if I add a line or two or shorten a line or two, it only changes the number by a a, a nominal amount. But if you're if you're if you'd like to look at that, then then um, again, you just have to be aware that um, you're going to lose you're going to you're going to lose a, a, some spaces on each row. So each row you'll lose, you know, uh, not quite certain at present because we're still working towards it. But when we get to that point, we'll come back to you. Hopefully by next month, we'll tell you exactly what what the thought is for uh, for each of the lots. Um, the the asphalt plants open within the next couple of weeks. Most contractors have some things they got to take care of early, and then they'll be hungry in the April May time frame to start work. So we're trying to gear ourselves towards uh, towards that time frame specifically for locust. And then, you know, like I said, the railroad and the lumberyard will have to wait until the uh, June, July, August time frame when a lot of the commuters are on vacation, and there'll be open spaces in the lot. Uh, any questions on lots themselves or? We good? So, Tiger, the upper lumber yard lot, do uh, you think will be in September or after July, August, or will that make it into August? I would like to see it in August. It's not, uh, it's, you know, it's, um, this is a little bit more involved um, because some of the pavement is actually gone. Uh, specifically, you can see it actually here in the picture. You see right here, that is all gravel. I went out there the other day and it's gravel. So there's nothing left. So, this lot's a little bit further along than, uh, or in further damage than the others. So it's a little bit more work that is involved for this one than the other two. The railroad lot is the easiest as far as um, uh, construction, then Locust, then the Lumberyard, I would say in the three. But yeah, I'd like to do it in August, but we'll see. It might be August, early September. My only concern is in September when the commuters, it's back up to full again. We have mm -hmm. all these employees in 220 parking down there also now. 
I, I don't agree with you. I, I don't, I mean, I agree with you. I, you know, I don't disagree. The, uh, that, uh, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the concern. I just can't take, you just can't take all three out at one time or two out at one time. So if I can get the railroad lot done early in early June or, you know, early summer, then yeah, we'll have ample time to do the, uh, to do the lumberyard lot. And that, that is the goal is to have it done within those two month time frame. <clears throat> the, uh, go ahead. Uh, just curious, <clears throat> the decision to do these, I mean, I know it was sort of in the in the background for some time, previous administration, was there, you know, some urgency on the part of, I mean, it, it sounds like the uh, the upper lot there is, is very damaged and, and needs to be done, but uh, just just curious if there was a, an urgency on, on kind of the, the wear and tear part of it, or what was the, no, the impetus to do this, this, this year? The impetus, the impetus is coming because the first selectman wants to see them pay. So the uh, as far as as far as it goes on a repair method for us, as far as for pavement management, you you try to catch your pavement before it deteriorates to certain levels because if, if it deteriorates past those certain levels, it costs a little bit more each time, right? So the longer you leave it, these lots haven't been done, and except for the lump, uh, the railroad lot, the other two haven't been done in so long that. From one year to the next, it's it's only going to cost me inflation, if you will. It's the same technique. I'm already at the worst technique that I have to be at. Um, so it's just inflation year over year. But the first selectman wants to see us do these lots. She's gotten complaints in both. And um, they are somewhat of an eyesore and uh, somewhat of a liability for tripping and falling uh, on them. So she wants to, uh, you know, not have that, not have that concern. And, and we agree. So we'll... Uh, We'll come in and take care of them. Just Any curious, uh, but sure. there's only, uh, I guess, four of us here, but does anybody else have any strong opinions on the spacing? You know, just just kind of taking the temperature. Is that a, a, a P with uh, anyone? Yeah, I, I think for sure we're going to have to look at the spacing in Morse and in Playhouse and and yeah. also Park Street, too. Um, understanding that that might result in uh, a, a few fewer spots, but it's it's really impossible to park. Um, I think more impossible to park at Playhouse than it is to park at Mor Morse Court. In I terms Morse of the Court work. is just a little bit friendlier because of the angle, right? Straight, but it I can't still... say I parked at Locust recently, so I just don't know, but. Anyway, oh well, that's yeah, it's a minefield. That 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 definitely has to get. No, but in terms of spacing. Oh, the yeah. spacing doesn't. I park at Lo at Locust quite a bit. I I don't. Okay. I don't have an issue with the spacing at Locust. Okay. Fine. I drive like a big SUV, and and park, parking in some spots in Morse Court, you can definitely tell that they're a lot thinner than other spots. So it's kind of like a, a game of trying to find the the larger the wider spots. You can definitely tell that they're a different size. Width. Yeah, you can even see it from this aerial view here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you, you, yeah. But well, to Kevin's point, when you go out there, when Maria and I were measuring, the first first one we measured was eight and a half feet, and then she said, "Look at the one next to us." And then we measured that; and it was seven and a half. And then she said, "Oh, look at that one over there," and we walked over, and that one was seven and a half. So you can pick them out. You can pick them yeah. out a lot when, when they're markedly narrower. Um, mm -hmm. You know, from from our perspective. I've gotten complaints in the Morse Court lot and the Playhouse lot. I haven't really received complaints in other lots as far as their their widths, uh, Locust, Lumberyard, what have you. But uh, I know in Morse Court and in uh, the Playhouse, we've gotten concerns um, prior. But when we uh, when we settle on a layout, we'll come back to you to you know to tell you exactly where it is, what we're doing, and then you know gather some feedback as to the number of spaces that you have currently and the number of spaces that you will have post uh, post restriping uh, post paving restriping so uh for, for the uh for the center school lot are you gonna re I, I didn't even look over there since they've taken down like the construction equipment uh for the library does that need to be like restriped or anything it's actually a lot of it was done with by the library what we have to do is we have to i was there today i, I have to ask the library to realign their uh basically go to the plan that we had prior or we had originally approved, which is all the library spaces closer to the library. 
So the first couple of tiers will be all the library right now. You had, you had, a, uh, you had a, someone in before complaining that they couldn't, uh, you know, they didn't know where they were parking. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, I think it's all well signed to be perfectly honest with you, but you know, for her to, in her benefit, you know, you have half a tier being library, half a tier being town. And if you don't pay attention to where the sign stops, you have a problem. So mm -hmm. our initial mm -hmm. thought was to have the entire tier library. So you'd have it stacked to look for the library. So you would know this entire area is the library and then everything behind it is the town. So um, as part of their, as they're moving out of our lot, we're going to have them um, redo the, the signage and the striping so that it, um, so it's a little bit better. And then you probably, hopefully you won't get um, another appeal, a complaint for an appeal for that, you know, that, that'll right. be a very easy, you know, it'll, it'll be a readily available or, or easily to understand. Um, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if this is a question for like the, the lot, for like the science and stuff, but for, for that lot specifically, is there any way, I don't know if you have to go through like planning and zoning or whatnot, but is there any way to put like on the like painted on the ground, like, free library parking or and then like paid spots like having a line or something that kind of differentiates the two different lots well they uh that uh you know it's a good idea they the library wanted to do something where they actually had an ncl in front of theirs right in front of their spaces mm -hmm. we have numbers we have spaces and um at present we were like oh if it's numbered you, you gotta pay right if it does if it's not numbered then it's free right so was really the thought we didn't you know instead of having it marked with ncl and then have them have to remark it all the time we thought it was um at the time we thought well if it's got a number then go play at the kiosk um but we can certainly revisit that with the library and see what their feelings are on it they're trying to have a sign you know very close together so that you can see them um you know with an arrow pointed so if you're in one space you look across you'll be able to see the arrow shining towards yours to see the other space across um in the situation that we're in, I could understand where there might be a little bit of misunderstanding. I think when we get to the plan that we're, uh, that we have, um, I think hopefully it'll go all away. And if it doesn't, we can always tweak it. It's, it's paint. It's not, uh, it's not hard to put out um, to your point. Who's responsible for monitoring the library spots? Because I would imagine there might be people who would think to park. Library. The, the library. library is. Mm -hmm. We do occasionally go through it and run plates just to make sure our permit holders or, or people, um, mostly our permit holders, because if it's somebody that doesn't come up with a permit and they're, we don't know if they're in the library or not. So, you know, that's why the library is really supposed to be monitoring those spaces. They belong to the library. But occasionally we will go through and run some plates just to make sure our permit holders are not taking those spaces out, and you know we can let them know and move them to the right area. But uh, other than that, there's so that's not one. treated as a private lot. But the basically you can look at it that way. Yeah, yeah. It, it um, yeah, it's not my private yet. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. I. I think Bob yep. might have a question. Nancy. For Nancy. May I make a comment? Yes, please. Um, just a, a little heads up on a temporary basis with regard to the Center School of Richmond Hill. Uh, everybody knows that St. A's has a major construction project going on uh, and temporarily a number of spaces uh, are closed down and also walking around the campus is very difficult. So we're finding it convenient to use the center school lot. And uh, especially if you're going to an event after church at Stapleton Hall, it's actually closer than anything. And same thing with Richmond Hill. Uh, I went to an event the other night and I took advantage of using the crosswalk by the bell at center school lot. So I think we're going to see more evening activity or Sunday activity out of those lots during the construction phase. Just I know, for example, St. A's does very well with boxcar. And right. on that Wednesday, there was chaos there because either the church forgot to shut those spaces off 
or Boxcar forgot to. And at about 7 to 7.45 in the morning, there wasn't a place to park anywhere, including the people who had paid for a boxcar space. And we okay. worked that with Stacy. Okay. Any other questions on the lots before I move a little bit? Uh, yeah, one last question on budget. So the money to repave these lots, does that come out of a special fund? Is it the parking fund or is it a, a so the, different the money, town? The money to repave the locust lot is not. That money was that was on the town side. Um, the railroad lot will come out of the railroad fund. There's a separate fund for the uh, the railroad lot and the railroad uh, the station themselves. Um, and and the uh, it can at present uh, for the lumberyard lot can be taken out of uh, the um, the parking fund, but the board of finance would have to determine that. At present, they uh. They haven't slated that to be taken out of there. They might, but they haven't slated that yet. The parking fund itself has approximately a million dollars in it. One zero three one five eight four as of fiscal end twenty four. Um, and then, uh, but then they they'll uh, all the all the permits and all the fees get uh, loaded in at the end of the year. So come June, everything will load in for the end of this year. Um, but at the beginning, we were at 103.1584. They haven't really taken anything out um, so that the Board of Finance might make that determination and not have it paid for on the on the town side, but they haven't yet. Um, so that, that'll that okay. be made to be seen. The uh, So the, uh, the next thing is what's happening on Elm Street or what we plan on Elm Street. So we've been putting in, this is uh, South Avenue is down here to the bottom right and Elm Street is running left to uh, left to right. The Playhouse is here on the left hand corner, upper left hand corner. And uh, what used to be Dunkin Donuts is down here across the street. Um, so at present, we put in the majority of we've extended the, the the edge of the road or the sidewalk all the way up to the edge of the Playhouse in between Le Pen and the Playhouse. And we have this last bit to take care of. Um, once the Playhouse is complete, we'll come in and finish this area. Um, the numbers that you see here are basically what will be and what was. So in this stretch here, right at the beginning of the pandemic, when we put in all the barricades across, we wound up losing five spaces in that area. We had those spaces lost since the pandemic. So since uh, 2019, 2020, um, they've been gone. But when we come forward and put in these bump outs on South Avenue and Elm, and the bump outs in front of um, across the street from the playhouse. If you look at the numbers again, the numbers actually start to change. We had eight, we get to 11, we had 17, we get to 19. So net, we gained five back. So it's a net of zero. So while we're at a deficit of five at present, once we complete these during the summer, we'll actually gain five back and uh, it'll be a net zero from uh, what it was prior. So while we've, we've gone for the past four years or so, down five, the addition of additional five will be a uh, will be welcome at that point in time. But uh, the um, go ahead. What's the timing on that? This summer is uh is the plan. I'm just trying to get the playhouse out of the way. Once I get the playhouse out of the way, then I can come in here and take care of the rest of it, and then the road will get repaved. And once the road gets repaved, then we'll restripe and we'll restripe according to this uh this plan here. Uh, what the the beauty of this plan is the fact that because we have hard bump outs throughout, it changes the, the dynamic as to the distance off of a crosswalk that we have to have. So right. that, that allows us to yes. bring back some of the spaces um, because now we'll be shortening the distance across for each walk. Um, so that, that helps. So now the person is standing out here and can see cars versus standing back here, walk, standing behind the cars. It's a completely different site sight lines so it changes the parameters at that point in time for what we need to do um therefore that's how we're gaining some spaces back so we're we're I looking at i couldn't do it last summer because uh, eversource was in and out all mm -hmm. summer long um they were supposed to leave the summer for us but they uh they couldn't um as far as their work and i didn't want to double up they had a lot of work going on as you know in this corner right here and up in this corner here and uh 
it wasn't it, it wouldn't have been beneficial for us to be there at the exact same time they needed to do their work and get out of the way they actually were were good enough to modify their design to fit with what we need to do here on this bump out in front of dunkin donuts and then they were in working in this area so it was, it was in our best interest to let them finish they're done with their underground work now um now they're just into wiring and things of that nature uh which is not going to affect us um so at that point in time we'll uh we'll go forward and take care of this this sketch actually just shows turning radii for a large truck to be able to make the turn um and then uh we had a subsequent one for coming the other way so we could show that actually a, a large uh, uh, medium-sized semi semi-tractor trailer could uh could make it make the turns across that was a concern from uh the police commission um but i don't know if you have any questions on what's happening overall the only other thing we have is that uh we will be putting in decorative bump outs we won't be using the um white uh barricades anymore we bought concrete planters <laughs> that are basically the same footprint as a precast concrete barrier curb but they're uh, actually decorative concrete and have a planting area in the middle so that the uh, beautification league is graciously offered to come in and plant all of them. So as we put them along the, the road in front of Rosie's in front of uh, chef Louis um, to allow outdoor dining in those areas, they'll be a lot more uh, appealing, mm -hmm. aesthetically appealing. And then, uh, and then the beautification league can plant them and their, their idea at present is to plant them the uh, same color scheme as the hanging baskets. So it'll be a whole cohesive uh, look through Elm street. And we'll be going to the police commission this month for that approval uh, because the uh, outdoor dining starts as of, I believe, April 1. So we'll have to come out and uh, put the barricades out at that time. So there'll be a little bit of loss of spaces in front of Rosie's and a little bit of loss in front of uh, Chef Louis, similar to um, similar to last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, I, I, sure. I, I just had one question on um, the five that we're going to be gaining uh, that the width of those spaces is going to be standard at nine feet. Yeah, those are. Yeah. Cause we'll restrike mm -hmm. back that this, this area is, is done to standard. It's just uh, the angles, you know, it, it, it all very, it, the, the regulation is um, goes by not only whether there's perpendicular or on the angle and everything has at that point in time, a certain scale. And that these are all to that regulation. So we will be putting them back at that point um, to that. So you shouldn't have an issue. Um, are these, are these going to be the exact same like angle too as what they currently are or yeah, more or less? We will be, yeah. yeah. If you change the angle, you actually start to um, take up either more or less uh, curb space. So as you kind of change the angle, you take up more curb space, you shorten it down and to the point where 90 degrees is the most uh, efficient. Problem with 90 degrees is you need a full 24 feet to get the car out to pull back around. So your your aisle in the back needs to be a full 24 feet. So this that's the reason why they're angled is so the car can actually stay close to one lane and still have one lane of traffic. If we 90 them up, we need the entire two lanes to pull the car out. So that's yeah. why you can't. But so but with that, there's a loss in efficiency for the angle, right? So it's kind of a it's a it's a game that you have to play between loss of efficiency versus uh, versus aisle width, things of that nature, and how do you maximize? And at present, this angle gives us the most, <clears throat> the least amount of curb length that's taken, and we can still make the turn with the, with the least amount of aisle space that we need in the back. So it's, it's, you, it is the most efficient design at present. Have you guys looked at what the impact is gonna be when there's double parked uh, delivery trucks and such that happen? Daily. We've had that already. So mm -hmm. that the, the bump outs on the south side don't matter because it's basically they're either in a hashed area where no one parks or they're in a in a parking stall. So and we've already had double parked cars throughout. The last part of the bump out is just here. So mm -hmm. living with that for the past four years and um the traffic still seems to flow quite well. You know, I mean you still get stuck behind a truck, have to wait and, and make a merge, but traffic speeds on Elm Street are approximately 13 miles per hour. 13 mm -hmm. to 15 maximum. Um, that's not early morning or late night when there's no one on the street, but day to day, it's about 13 miles per hour is our average. And uh, so we haven't seen a problem. We had a traffic engineer come in and study it, came in and study the parking layouts, came on, came in and study, you know, what we needed to do. And uh, 
we're, we're following their recommendations. The, uh, <clears throat> so then the next is just, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about signage and striping. Okay, so we follow what's called the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, the MUTCD. Uh, this past year, December 23, came out with their 11th edition. We have been following the 2009 10th edition. Took them about 14 years to come forward with the next one, and they promised that they'll change the regulation once every two years going forward. But this is the standard for the town. The police commission has adopted the MUTCD. The state of Connecticut has adopted it. Federal government, since this comes from the Federal Highway Administration, has adopted it, and every state in the union has. Um, so basically, when you come up to a stop bar, it's the same width here in Connecticut as it is in Hawaii. So you don't have to worry about where you travel. That's the whole reason for it. So given that, <clears throat> just a little bit about parking, there is a, an entire section on parking. If you'd have a parking signs, if you'd like to go follow it, um, but it's section 2B52, and it talks about what parking signs pertain to the parking, standing, and stopping of vehicles along the roadway and in designated parking areas. And then as far as where to place the parking signs, they're basically the efficacy of parking, standing, and stopping signs when used on conventional roads in urbanized or developed environments depends on their visibility and consistent placement along a street or within a particular block. And basically what they're telling you is that you want to be able to see from one to the next, okay? So we don't need them every five feet. The the standard is approximately one at once, one every hundred feet, you know, maybe one. And if sometimes if it's really busy, you come down to one every 50, but you wouldn't need them every stall. You just need to be able to see from one to the next. And you don't necessarily need to be able to read the legend, the sign and the color tell you the majority of it is pro provided that it's all standard. That's why red is prohibitive, green is permissive, right? So you keep a green color for permissive, they know that they can park there. And then the timing might change, the legend for the timing might change. And if it's red, you understand that there's no parking in that area. So when someone says, I can't see the sign, it's not necessarily that they need to read it. If they can read the color, then they know exactly whether or not, you know, if they can read that it's red, it's non-permissive, right? It's prohibited. If they can read that it's green, it's permissive. Then it's their responsibility to go and see exactly whether it's permissive during a certain time frame, like ours are, you know, between a certain time frame in the downtown and how many hours they're allowed. That's why there, our legend in the upper corner is, is big enough so that they can read that number from a distance as well, whether it's two hour parking, three hour parking, what have you. Um, and then as far as parking spaces go, um, they actually tell us exactly what needs to happen. I know there's been some questions about, you know, what color? Well, they tell us on-street parking space markings shall be white. So the MUTCD gives us three words, shall, should, and may. A shall is that has to happen. A should is, well, we should think about doing it. And may is, well, if we want to, and we want to have the additional help for it, you know, to maybe, uh, put a stop ahead sign someplace so someone could see a little bit better before they come to a stop sign. Those things, those are, those are shoulds and mays, but when it's a shall, shall be white. The reason for that is because if you look on any road, yellow is on the left-hand side of the road, white is on the right-hand side of the road. So if you can't see, or you can only see the colors at night, you can tell exactly where you're supposed to be. So that's why it's a double yellow or a single yellow on a, on a center line. So you have a single yellow with a hash, a hash mark alone, or a double yellow that's always going to be on your left-hand side. And on your right-hand side is always going to be white. Drive down the highway, the exact same thing. Your ramp aprons, all white. The, the Anything on the left-hand side, if you got anything on the other side, be yellow for you so that you can actually navigate in the dark. Um, so for us to change over, I know we used to have yellow in some of our hashed areas, you know, in the triangles. Here they allow just an open triangle or they'll allow you to hash the triangle. They don't tell you what you what you should do at that point in time. Their feeling is majority of the time it's just an open open triangle, but it should be yellow. It should be white. I'm sorry. It shouldn't be yellow. Um, so, you know, we have been trying to follow this and this standard as far as the look and the feel. We try to actually follow this middle portion here with a, with a hash or a T in the middle uh, to be able to then designate. And that actually helps people find their way a little bit better um, on the street and stay within their stall so that they don't creep over on another. And then we wind up losing, uh, losing efficiency uh, throughout. Um, again, it's just a bigger view of the exact same uh, figure from before. I just turned it to the side so you could see it. But again, all white. And then you can either put in a hash 
or put in a white, and they do not tell you the distance between the hashes. Usually that comes about yeah. as far as how big that how big the triangle is as to the spacing. So if it's a smaller triangle, they'll go down to a two foot, one foot spacing. If it's a much larger triangle, they'll go to a four foot or an eight foot spacing, depending upon the, the distance of this triangle. Well, that will, will, will dictate so that you're not cluttering it up too much and you're not having, you know, uh, too few at that point. Um, I know you guys had questions about uh, handicap spaces. The last one about Starbucks. So this comes from uh, the ADA. Uh, this actually comes from the Access Board, the U.S. Access Board, which uh, um, is, uh, you call them if you have questions about um, disability and uh, situations for accessibility. So basically, accessible spaces must be identified by signs with the international symbol of accessibility, which is this we call blue bob. Um, and then the signs themselves shall be, this is again, you know, must be, they say must be, it's a shall be 60 inches. So that sign in the Starbucks parking lot is not the code. It's because it's sit on a bollard. So it's actually supposed to be 60 inches tall. Problem that you have is if you don't have a sign that's at the right height, and you don't have the stalls created correctly, it's technically not a handicapped space, right? At that point in time, someone could argue that it's not, not a space. Um, and then it gets down to the international symbol of accessibility should be placed in each parking space, but it's not a shell and it doesn't designate the space itself. It's a good thing to do and we try to do it in every single one of our spaces, but it's not mandatory. So it's, what's mandatory is the outside striping, the hashes, for people to be able to have access, and then the sign. Those are the two things that are mandatory, is the striping and the sign, not necessarily the symbol uh, in the middle. So, And the outside uh, border would be blue, even if it's a not, private space? It oh. does not have to be. So that's that's the, that, that's the next one. It was a great question. So blue lines may supplement the white line, but it's not mandatory. It doesn't have to be blue. It has to be white, and you can put blue on the outside, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, and then this is just a chart tells you exactly how many spaces you're supposed to have per parking space. Basically, your first space in a parking lot has to be disabled, has to be an accessible space. And then your 26th, your 51st. So they go in 25 uh, number increments up to 150. And then past that, they get into uh, they get they get to one per 50 and then one per 100. So if you look at it, 126, 51, 76, 101. And then you get to 151, right? So that's kind of it. So you kind of, at that point in time, you can understand exactly what it is um, and how many you should have. And then the only other thing is based on size, they should be eight feet long, eight feet wide, nine feet long. And then depending upon if it's a standard space, it's going to be 60 inches wide. And if it's a van space, it's got to be eight feet wide. So eight, eight for a van, eight, five for uh, a standard space. And that 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 kind of gives you your dictation as to whether or not it's a true disabled space or not. So the one at Starbucks, while they've signed it and tried to be a, a good neighbor for it, it's not technically a a, a disabled space at present um, due to its configuration and and, um, and its markings. So I, I don't have any uh and, have and anything it's placement, else. And it's questions. placement in the lot, right? I mean, it's not the first space. I mean, it's a weird. That's a space. that's a that is another thing too. It should be along the curb line, because um, it should be the first space and it should be along the curb line, you're correct. There, I think that they're, you know, they um, they were trying to, you know, do a good thing, so to speak, but you shouldn't have your access aisle um, go through a parking lot, especially if you've got parking spaces adjacent to the curb, adjacent right. to, to, the, uh, to the establishment at that point. So yeah, I went out, out there and looked at it and their first space to the far left or their space to the far right, they should be looking at those Specifically, the ones at the, the far left would probably be the best. They could have the hash mark first, then the space, and then the rest of the spaces that they would have. Um, mm -hmm. But they have they have other issues on that lot as well that will have to be uh, taken into account. We did go out and put you no know, parking signs on both sides of that wall. Um, it is a sidewalk. I, you know, I looked at it. It's concrete. <laughs> it's a it's a it might not have a curb, but not all of our sidewalks have curbs that used to be a gas station back before it was a Starbucks. So it was just a ramp that a concrete ramp that led to the, uh, to the uh, edge of the road, but it is clearly delineated in my opinion. You know, I think you were nice to that individual myself, but uh, you know, we did put up signs on either side. Um, albeit smaller signs are six inches wide. They're the ones we put on our lampposts, but we didn't want to clutter up that whole 
look from from Starbucks itself. And I am looking to try to redo that sidewalk from the intersection to the um, access road, uh, I guess you would call it, or the driveway. Yeah, like, a little, yeah. The a alley issues as they go further south, but there, um, people are parking on it every day. Well, if if uh, if we go forward with the design that we have, it'll have a raised curb in front of that uh, in front of that wall. Will be a raised granite curb, so they'll know that they're on the curb at that point in time. They can't say that I didn't know I was driving off the road. <laughs> um, and then uh, you know, and then but the uh, the driveway itself, uh, back when it received approval back for its site plan from P and Z a number of years ago. The chief of police at that time wrote that it should be an in and out, meaning in on, in off Elm Street, out onto Park Street. So that was part of the approval is to have that driveway. So to close that off would be quite problematic in that lot. Um, I, I don't disagree. It's kind of difficult to come out while everyone's queuing up for the stoplight, but it was a part of their approval. So that driveway would remain. We would delineate it. We have we always carry our sidewalk through the through the. The, uh, the apron itself and then we would delineate both sides of that uh that that apron with with uh bituminous concrete and then the rest of it would be granite and, and uh regular concrete so um we are looking to do that this year at some point in time that would be a major improvement is there and what's the remedy on the handicapped space is that p and z or building That's, yeah i i spoke to uh I spoke to the town planner. She's uh, she's looking at it at present. She had her um, enforcement officer pull the files on it, and she's looking at it. And then she'll come back and uh, start to make a determination as to what needs to happen there. Yeah, I I, I think that there's further information to come on that. Great. Just back on the striping, one follow-up question. So do you feel uh, confident that, that you're – striping is more or less uh consistent with the manual or have you identified yeah. in spots where well the the, uh, the unfortunate thing is that locust they, they looked at an older aerial and striped it yellow when uh the directive was to stripe it in white unfortunately so while it looks beautiful and you can see it's all yellow and what have you eventually that'll have to change i'm not going to go out there and grind it out uh that's just a waste of money in my opinion you know i'll wait for the uh i'll wait for five years six years until that that uh, marking starts to fade and then put white on top of it but for the most part yeah and we've been looking at each one of our areas as whether or not we should supplement um some of the markings for you um to make it a little bit easier for you we specifically looked in and changed some markings on uh maple and main uh the four corners of maple and main um the corner of Maple, uh, Maine and Cherry, and then anywhere else that, uh, you know, we pay attention to what happens to you at, in your commission meetings and where people complain. And then we try to go out and, and see if we can't make it better, uh, you know, right after it happens so that so that you won't get a second second uh, appeal on the same uh, same parking space or the same issue. Just circling back to those triangle spots. I mean, if I had a, a vote, I don't know about my colleagues, but where they're it, it's it's not a should but it's optional mm -hmm. but i would say when when possible and the budget allows to strike those triangle areas i think it's just really helpful visually but yeah that's just my two cents i agree well, that's fine you know the i mean it's yeah it, it, it six one half dozen the other right i mean it's it's on an angle you kind of save us and it's it's across the space you shouldn't park across it but to your point you know we can we can certainly fill it i like to have them with a little bit of markings in it. So you can say, you know, you might've missed the one angle, but you didn't miss the other hashes, right? So right, at that right, point right. in time, it kind of, kind of cleans up any, or clears up any, um, uh, you know, misunderstanding, let's put it that way. Um, but Stacy's pretty good at letting us know where she sees things, where her, where her, um, when her people are out, they, they're very good at telling us, you know, certain areas need concern, you know, we can go out there and address it. Um, we don't stripe in-house. We have a we have a contractor come in, and we are a very small fish in a very big pond as far as striping goes, right? So <laughs> the contractor is pretty much the predominant uh, striping contractor in the entire Northeast. Yeah. So we've got to uh, we have to, you know I give him a, an entire list of what needs to be done, and then he picks at it during the year. You know. The, the, the good thing is that it's crews come out of Bridgeport. So as they're traveling back to the yard, if they've got 10 things that they could do in town and they've got two hours left before the end of the day, they'll come and they'll take care of it. So I'm not a, 
I, I'd rather have it that way and have him take care of us when he can than uh, continue to pound my fist on the table. And and we're we're not spending enough money to uh, make it worth his while, to be quite honest. You know, one, just, we, we're just not big enough. One follow up on the striping: Are you allowed to stripe uh, at will on uh, state-owned roads, like, or is that verboten? If That's uh, well. So the, uh, the the parking stalls are ours, and uh, they're our responsibility, and we're allowed to restripe those at will. I can't stripe their uh, uh, stop bars, center lines, things of that nature. That's on them. If we were to uh, basically, if we see an issue or we see a problem, I usually notify. There's a gentleman, in it, we're in District 3. There's a gentleman in District 3 who's in charge of all signage and striping. I usually notify him and say, listen, I've got, you know, I'm going to be in the area. Can I freshen up these these markings? And he'll either say yes or no. He knows exactly who we're using. And he has no concern about the contractor or the or the methods or the materials. But sometimes they'll come out and do it themselves, or sometimes they'll just allow us to do it. But I have to get permission for those parking stalls. I don't need permission for any other markings on a state road I do. Okay. Can't remember off the top of my head if we've had any issues on Maine there. Uh, as it it's uh, oh, actually, actually it, I have one uh, question for East. Maine. For 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 from Maine, uh, I went to that that talk. I think we're going to talk about it later about with uh, Jeff Speck, uh, mm -hmm. Tiger. Did you have, look into the uh, angled parking on Maine between like East and Jerry? We are looking at that. The um, yeah, that'll be again. So that'll get into um, while. The parallel parking is fine, and we can restripe the parallel parking. If we chose to want to go with an angled parking between Cherry and Maine, as he suggested, there's a couple of spots where we could do, like, um, mm -hmm. where it's wider um, on Maine between Cherry and Elm or between Elm and Bur uh, Elm and um, East. There's a couple of spots there where it's quite wide, and we might be able to do it. I would have to go back to the state, and the state might um, frown on that because – the car is backing out into traffic and they might say, no, that they don't want to have that right now, a, a parallel space while you might be backing into the parallel space. You've, you've kind of, you know, edged up to it. You've got your blinker on if you're following, you know, all the rules and then you back into the space and people go around you. If someone had a back out of a parking space into the state uh, right away, they might not look upon that favorably, but we are looking at it and we'll look at, we'll get a layout and then we'll go to the state and see if they'll, if they'll, um, approve that if they approve it then we should be able to gain a good amount of spaces through that yeah hopefully that hopefully you can get through <laughs> we are yeah we are we're looking at other things that uh that mr speck you know um suggested we're looking at you know turning off the parking uh the the traffic lights at, on park street um we're going to study it first do it and then study it after and see if there's a market change uh, one way or another and then we'll know whether it was successful or not so we are looking at that we're looking at a couple of other uh, things that he was talking about as far as um what we consider mainline striping right so your center line striping your edge line striping things of that nature we're looking at that as well on certain roads you know he had some very good suggestions um yeah and it was a very good talk so we're we're uh we're listening Tiger, would the angled parking on Main Street that would be on the northbound? Would we put it on the northbound side? Most likely, most likely it would be on the northbound side. That's correct. So I, I would say the Connecticut Muffin side, right? So you know that yeah. that's a be is uh would and that's the area that we're actually specifically looking at is that that stretch, um, because we have the 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 stretch that's in front of the bank. There's a couple of no parking spaces in front of the bank because of um. Uh, we have problems with the crosswalk there, right? So in between the two crosswalks, we can't park. So that first stretch, um, uh, I would say in front of Connecticut Muffin, and then the secondary stretch um, further down, we we might be able to in front of the AT&T building. Um, those are the two pieces that we're looking at. This is apropos of nothing and not really in our purview, but I will say right at town hall, right Pat, if you're if you're coming out of the playhouse lot or the town hall lot and going on to Maine, you know, across from those restaurants, kind of kitty corner from the fire station, 
believe it or not, there are people who park right in front of that stop sign to run in and get something which blocks your exit yeah. from the parking lot. So yeah, not sure that's, if there's a ribbon. They are ticketed. We have yeah, right. They're, they're there, they park in, in the uh, in the triangle there, right at the edge of the driveway, right? They try to make an extra space. Yeah. You know, they pull in right to the end because they're going to go crazy. It was probably worse when Vicola was in uh, uh, in operation, you know, the pizza place. Okay. But, um, but yeah, you're right. And the, and the driveway for the town hall is quite narrow. So it does, right. and that's, and the, with the wall, it makes it a little bit tough. As you come from that car parked, you're in the, and that, there might be a car turning right into the lot, which, which uh, becomes problematic. But that, that comes down to the only thing that's there is enforcement. We can put a sign. We have signs that say, don't turn around the driveway. We've had signs that say, no standing. It, it, the, it's just a sign at that, at that point in time. It has to come down to a little bit more, you know, I won't say more enforcement, just enforcement. And then hopefully it, that'll become a deterrent. Though I don't think we'll stop everybody, though. Unfortunately. Any other questions or thoughts? I, I mean, if there is, all you got to do is just ask Stacy, and I'll either answer. You can okay. you can email me directly. Um, I would suggest that email me directly on any concerns that you might have that you see out there. See, certainly, CC Stacy, so she's aware of it. But Stacy, she brings the information to me. She's mm -hmm. she's not the one who does the work, so. If there's something that hasn't been done, that's on me, not on her. So, uh, you know, it's not from a lack of her asking. Um, but certainly if there's another question or a concern or you see something, feel free to email me, call me, what have you. And then, uh, like I said, copy Stacy so she's aware of it. And then, uh, you know, or if there's other questions you might have, I'm happy to come back at another time and, and uh, talk further. I would imagine I'll be back anyways to talk about timing for the lots just to let you know what's going on um as we get a little closer um so it might be next month might be the month after but uh, I'm, I'm certain i'll be back but if there's like i said if there's another question or something feel free i would say half of our issues are paint related so you're tackling most of them <laughs> this summer <laughs> so. we're trying we're trying the uh the uh you know we went through a you know, it was a bad spell there for a while with a lot of contractors in and around the areas where you're uh where you're concerned with that we necessarily couldn't get to but you know we'll uh if i attack those three lots a lot of those striping concerns go away or those four lots i should say if we include more yeah. court a lot of your striping concerns go away and then like i said then we'll be looking at the playhouse and the park street lot um subsequent to that those are those are after these couple fall those those next ones will fall as well um the uh and we'll go from there So that would be likely then in 2025, you think those the the playhouse and the Park Street or right. The uh the playhouse lot might be later in 24. Depends upon how long it takes to get um this this ramp in and move the compactor, finish the playhouse, get the ramp in, get the compactor in. I gotta finish the playhouse, I don't want to be in the way of that. Then I gotta put the ramp in, excuse me, move the compactor, then put the ramp in. So based upon that timing. Whenever that finishes, then we're going to come in and finish the lot. I would yeah. like to have it at the at the close of the season, to be quite honest, that we're uh, I, I envision it like the cat in the hat, right? The cat in the hat, he comes in, he cleans everything out as he goes through the door. That's what I like to do, right? So we come in and we sweep it all out and make it pretty. Um, so we hope that we could do that. But uh, I, I, I don't know on timing yet. I, there's a couple of balls in play. And, and literally, once they start to fall, then we'll know a little bit more. Got it. Well, thank you very much. Oh, no this was good. Really helpful. Okay. All right. Thank you. I let, all right. Thanks. I let uh, MN in. I don't know who MN was, but the. Um, okay. Um, we'll find out. That might be your, uh, that your other issue. So, all right. If there's anything else, just let me know. Um, if not, have a great night. Thanks. Thank you too. You. All right. Thank you. All right. No problem. Take care. Take care. All right, let's find out who. MN, do you want to unmute? And it's 
Oh, MN disappeared. They disappeared. So I'm not sure who that was, but um, if they pop back up, um, we will let them in. So I do have to say that was very helpful that Tiger came in. Yeah, I think yeah, that was I, good. I felt uh, I felt it as well. So I'm glad he was able to join us and, and I think you guys got a little better insight as well as I did um on on where we are moving forward. So it was very enlightening. Uh, and the next, I guess, would be me for the fiscal year 25 budget. I am not as mastered in sharing the screen. Um, so I have my notes in front of me. So I don't know how I can just talk about it. I don't know if you have your the notes in front of you that I, I emailed you, but I can I know you've been asking about the parking budget. And let me see because I can I can make you co-host Nancy or you want to try doing it. Uh yeah, I've got which which okay, so I have the two FOIAs and then I've got the PDF on the budget here. And I can, budget. Yeah, let me see. I'm happy to um yeah. Great. I will master this. Air. <laughs> God knows what you're going to see on my laptop now. Oh, okay, there's that. Here we go. This. Okay. Perfect. This, I know it's... Wait, now my thing is spinning. Here. Okay, hold on. Just we to see to... it, so you're good. Okay. Yep. Okay. I don't okay. know... Wait, I, yeah, that one would be the one I would start with. I would start with the, the title of expenditures. Yes, okay, um, good. Um, this gives you a little idea of what it takes to run the department, what I budget for our yearly expenses. We have 19 accounts there. As you can see, it encompasses salaries, um, repairs to our mobile equipment, uh, parking meters, where it says service contracts. What that means is that our license plate reader, um, we have to pay a yearly fee to house uh, all of our history in there. Um, and it also helps for updates, any, any problems we have with um, connectivity, things like that, we pay that service contract. Moving down, office equipment um, covers um, our copy machine, postage, um, anything that we have to mail. We no longer have a category supplies and signs because Tiger will now oversee the signage. We used to, they used to take it out of accounts, but it went to uh, Tiger. Um, so now he manages that. Office supplies, gasoline, Voice and data uh, are our handhelds and phones that we use to enforce the lots. Um, we're able to bring up um, who paid through pay by phone, who paid through the machines. So that's where that voice and data charge comes in. Also, our laptops need to run on pucks because we have to have them in the car. So if we try to connect to any Wi-Fi as we're moving, it doesn't work. So that's why we, we have that. Um, so that's what covers under voice and data. Uniform equipment is pretty, you know, it, what it is, uniforms and equipment that uh, the officers need to um, be in the department. And the last would be banking and transaction fees. And what that covers is oh. credit card fees that the town absorbs when somebody comes into the office to pay a credit card, uh, any of the machines, the usage of the machines, through credit cards, all of those type of transactions are covered on the banking and transaction fees. It does get very costly. So basically that's a, a quick overview. And as you can see, it costs about 385, 327 to run this department annually. 
Um, hey, hey, Stacy, quick question. Sorry to interrupt. The uh, the platform that you've been using or, or probably not going to be using <laughs> if right. you have your way, what, yep. what line item does that come from? Um, that would be right now, uh, give me one second, I want to look at that. Outside service contract, uh, outside contract service. So, so here. Right, yeah, so right now that's where their monthly billing comes from. Um, and so it used to be a little bit higher because we are a little bit, they get a revenue of the amount of tickets that we write. Okay, so that's how they base their revenue on. So they get 12% of the revenue we take in for ticketing. Oh, because nice. we're trying to actually be a little bit more proactive with parking and help people to park instead of just issuing tickets. Of course, the revenue, and you will see on the next page, has gone down a little bit with tickets. So that's why we lowered the service, the outside service contract overall yearly budget. You know, do you want me to go to that next? To, and then the next, page. the other companies that I am looking at do not base their um, fees on ticket revenue. They just give me a yearly fee. So it uh, actually will be better, uh, less expensive, um, and work out better for us. So, any questions on the expenditures? What I, I need to run the department. Wait, just going back to that for a second, Stacy. This oh. is the this this twenty five thousand of the other services or outside services. Yes. That in, that includes their percentage of of the yes. ticket um, revenue. Yes. I see. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So moving on to revenues, as you can see, um, there's a few categories the town breaks it down in. We, what we get the revenues from permits, what we get the revenues from tickets, uh, our parking meter revenue, our boxcar revenue, uh, our permit waiting fee revenue, and our uh, one day passes, our day passes. Um, Again, uh, I estimate, I look at previous fiscal year um, actuals. I look at what the six months uh, revenue is at the time. I kind of base my estimates. Again, it's estimates. Um, I'm usually pretty close, but estimates are based on what I've seen, what I'm looking at for the future and what the six months is. So you'll see a little bit for fiscal year 25 for permits. It's gone down to 400 as for the current fiscal year. The reason is that it really, I am not looking at a decrease in permits. I'm actually looking at an increase in permits, but the way it was posted in previous years and you'll see what I mean moving forward, is I take a percentage of that money out to put in the parking fund. And that is dependent on how many permits I sell. So what I used to do is give them an estimate overall on what we would take in as permits. And then at the end of our fiscal year, I would take the actuals on permits and then give them an actual number. So it was, being showed as more where I was supposed to be, they want it now separated. So basically when you go and look at what I put in the parking fund, in addition to what I'm recommending for the permits this year and hoping to see this year, it actually is more than the 500,000. I'm estimating it at about 535. So it, it's, it's like a wash. It's not showing that I'm saying that we're getting less permits and less revenue for permits, we're just breaking it down differently. That what goes into the general fund as far as parking permits go, and then what is put into the parking fund itself. So um, that's why you see a, a difference in the amount from last year. Um, again, tickets, 
Uh, the revenue I'm estimating is going down a little bit because we're just trying to actually be a little bit more encouraging on how to park and where to park and, and trying to not ticket without giving people the opportunity maybe to move. Best way I can describe it. Um, meters are going up. Um, people are using the parking lots a lot more. With our pay by phone app, I find that people are now probably staying a little bit more longer because they do not have to run back to the machines and put money in. And so maybe would think about leaving. So they're uh, re upping their spaces. So I'm finding that the utilization of the lots and the payment in the lots are increasing. So that is why the meter revenue is going up a little bit. Uh, oh, sorry, but, Stacey. Just, yeah. Sorry, just a query oh. there. So you're saying the meter line item includes the app it's it's both together whether yes. they actually That's physically the money, use yes. the meter or not okay yep. Yep. that is for the meter revenue no matter how they're paying um you'll see boxcar boxcar is we're only talking about town of chill keep in mind that even though boxcar is is in saint aloysius church that we do not get any revenue from them, okay? So this is strictly talking about town and chill. Uh, people are going back to work. They're not going, not everybody's going back to work five days a week. So we're finding that for three heavy days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, people at town and chill are using the Boxcar app um, more frequently than the pay spaces at, at uh, town and chill. So Boxcar revenue is going up. So that's where that is based on as well. Um, permit waiting fee. Um, this is the $10 fee that we get from people going on the wait list. Um, we're seeing an increase a little bit of people moving in and wanting to go on the wait list. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We're doing well with that. And then day passers. Because a lot of people have given up their lumberyard permit because they don't need it um, on a daily basis to commute anymore, or even on a, a few day a week basis, they now are going into the city maybe once a month or just on occasion. Um, they are entitled to these one day permits. Uh, people at Town and Chill who don't want to use them at Town and Chill are entitled to these one day permits. So we are seeing an increase in the one day permits, um, the revenue going up in that because more people are utilizing it because they have given up their permits because they do not need it, uh, but they do still want to utilize that lot. And because they were former permit holders, we allow them to uh, get the permits in the lumber yard if they were lumber yard permit holders. And if not, they can get them for town with chill. You know, they don't want to go through the process of paying for a daily spot. They want the convenience of parking in the, the permit area. So that's, uh, that is. How much are those? How much are those? $7. How much? They're $7. So they're about a dollar more expensive than the paid daily spaces at the train station. And they're a dollar and a half more expensive than the town shop. And you can like, you can like buy those like in the future. So like, I want to buy it every Tuesday or something. Well, what you can do is you can buy anywhere from one to 10 per month. They never expire. So you can get a bunch of them. You can hold on to them and just use them um, when you need them. The only rule right now, and this is something when maybe we get through the wait list is the only rule right now is you cannot use them more than twice per week. That is the only stipulation to those. Oh, but most people that are getting them are not doing that. And so can you buy them online or? Not at this point because they are something physical that we, they fill out, they leave on the outside of their windshield and they are collected on a daily basis to ever use them. So it is not something that they can purchase or download online at the, at the, this time. That's good to know, though. I, and, I feel and like if it was online, much... people would use it a lot more. I'm sorry? I feel like if it was online, people would use it a lot more. 
Yeah, and it might be something that we can look into where they can, like they do at the glass house, where they could purchase it uh, online through maybe a credit card and they can just print it out and use it, um, you know, and put it on their car. It is definitely something to, to look into right. you know, for the future. Um, but right okay. now, that allowing people to buy up to 10 uh, at a time and knowing that they don't expire you know, they don't have to, it used to be that they would have to come in day up, okay, to get it years and years ago. If they wanted it, they would come in that day, they were only allowed to get one. So it has changed uh, a lot since, you know, they, they had those years ago, so. And Stacy, real quick, how much is the boxcar fee at Talmadge Hill per day? 550. Sorry, 550? 550. Okay. Yeah. Is it the same price as the same age? No, same age is same. Yeah, so they get a little bit more. Are there anything, is, is there and, anything more that we want to look here? Oh. Yeah, anything else with, with the, the rev, uh, revenue? Any questions? So the parking fund, that is what Tiger had mentioned earlier. Uh, and this is where the, the money, so the parking fund was established in 2011, okay? And what they did was they set a base fee of what the permits were that year. And moving forward, every year, you would take the difference between the base fee and what the permit cost is. The, the base fee that they set at that time, which I believe was for $429. And every year, if the permit went up, you would get the difference times the amount of permits in that particular lot. So over the years, you know, since the permits have gone up, the parking fund uh, has gotten more and more funds put in there. This year I'm estimating about $135,000 going into the parking fund from uh, the permits that we sell in fiscal year, uh, for fiscal year 25. But for fiscal year 24, um, I estimated about 120. I think we might be a little bit more than that because I'm hoping to sell a little bit more permits um, in at least the one they are lot. Um, so maybe we'll, we'll be able to hit a little bit higher. That's why I'm estimating it to be a little bit higher in 25. But that's how those funds get into the parking fund. Is there any questions on the parking fund? And it's used to uh maintain the lots the lots that that uh, you know tiger was talking about other than the railroad lot which comes from the next fund that we are going to look at which is called the railroad fund i actually have one okay, quick, quick question I, I yeah. kind of, uh what's the contingency uh i'm sorry uh the contingency above the parking meter replacement yes uh, yeah. which one? Are we, oh, oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure what, uh, I believe in that, I'm not sure what that is. I can absolutely find that out for you. Uh, that might be what they consider what I'm putting in there, but um, yeah, for, so for the parking, for the parking permits, uh, it does have a different fund number. So it, it looks like what they're estimating that I'm putting in for the permits, but I don't have an exact answer for you, but I'll have it for you next next meeting. I'll double check what they mean by that. And, and then I have, I have one more question too. Fee in lieu of parking. Are we the, I forget, are we the ones who um, who set those or would we have no, to let it's a different group? Is, is the fee in lieu of parking is Planning and zoning. Planning and zoning. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and and that they can talk a little bit more. I can briefly give you what that is, but basically, my understanding is if somebody goes in to redo a building or or and they need a certain amount of parking spaces, what but they can't provide all of those spaces, they can pay a fee in lieu of those parking spaces. That is what mm -hmm. I believe that that's what it means. But yeah, again, planning and zoning usually deals with this, and I can get you more of a definite answer 
Uh, yeah, can, can we like recommend them to update that? Because I know I was looking at like, the numbers of that, and I don't think they've been updated in like ten years. Certainly, could make a suggestion to them. I don't know if they're following yeah. any kind of guidelines where they have to only set a certain amount. I'll find that answer out for you as well. Okay. Um, you know, and I, no, let me speak with them, and I will have an answer for you for the next meeting. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Uh, so is the 12 and a half percent, is that just a, a revenue target? Is it, is that based on capping it at cost of inflation, you know, an increase in inflation or, or, you know, the CPI? I mean, where, where does that number come from? Like, again, we're, we're looking at the 12 and a half percent. Are we talking about? Yeah. The increase did that, was that a target amount, uh, you know, is that based on inflation? I can't remember what inflation was the last year or so. Oh, you mean the the two eleven figure that they started with? Is that no? So so again, um, we had one hundred twenty thousand. You know, adopted and or revised is like what we're gonna assume we're gonna make for revenue for twenty four, and then I see board of selectmen recommends one hundred thirty five thousand for fiscal year no, 2025. So, that, so where is that coming from? Okay, no, actually, so I recommended for this year, fiscal year, that we were going to put into the parking fund approximately $120,000 from our permit revenue. Okay, we haven't seen, we haven't gotten all of our permit revenue. So this is just a estimate on what's going in there. I estimated for fiscal year 25, because I'm estimating selling more permits, especially for the lumberyard, it to be 135,000. The Board of board of Selectmen accepted that recommendation. So okay. that's what that means. They accepted that recommendation from me that um, it's going to be 135,000. Um, okay, so you're not getting a directive from the Board of Selectmen saying, no. hey, our target increase for the next no. fiscal year is X, okay. No, no, this is based on what I feel, the amount of permits that we're gonna sell and, and what's gonna come from that and the difference in the thing. So that was my recommendation and they, they accepted that, approved it, shall I say. Okay. And the last, and uh, any, any other questions with the parking fund? Okay, and the last one would be the railroad fund. So the railroad fund is the actual train station parking lot where um, the pay daily spaces are, the Metro North area. So a push any of the payments that people make to pay for their spaces will go into this fund. Any tickets that we issue to people who do not pay for their spaces or are parked illegally in that lot will go into this fund. So the parking department is responsible for where it sits in the top portion, parking meters and parking tickets. So again, it's an estimate that based on fiscal year 23, on what we took in as far as payment for those pay, pay daily spaces, I estimated that amount of revenue coming into the parking fund. And actually you don't see it here and I don't know why it's not on here, but 15.5 is what we took in in tickets. So $15,500 for fiscal year 23 was the actuals in tickets. So again, I estimated it to kind of stay pretty much flat. I don't see us doing too much more so that's where you got the 16,000 from. Again, all of this is at estimate, all of this is just recommendation and all of this is based on previous numbers. And below that, um, we have some accounts that we take out of the railroad fund to cover repairs to parking meters, supplies, voice data, banking and transaction fees that only have to deal with the machines that are at the train station. And that is only the Canaan train station, the three machines located there. 
So um, the first, let's see, the first top one, two, three, four, five, six categories belong to the parking department. So I give them an estimate on what I think it would take to maintain those machines, cover the banking and transaction fees, and costs like that. Can I just ask you about the origin of, of the railroad fund? I mean, is it just been around for years and years? Uh, is there a purpose to have a separate fund for that railroad yeah. space? And what's the advantage of it rather than mixing it in with everything else? Basically, this fund was, so basically this is state property, okay? So the, the, the state allows us to maintain the property um, to uh, strike, to um, clean, to um, when they come in and uh, pave, things like that. Because this money is state money, okay, that we bring in. So technically it's supposed to go to the state, but the state allows us to oversee it so that we can watch and maintain that lot. So they have to keep a separate account so that that money goes specifically to that lot itself. So basically that's what the railroad fund is. It's just to cover that lot. Okay. You know, so the state allows us to keep it so that we can use it where we see necessary. So I imagine other towns with the stations, it's the same sort of setup, most likely. Is it, or is it because ours is a terminus? That I, I, is that ours is what? I didn't catch that. Table. Terminus, you know, where it comes to an end, okay. is that the word? I, 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 I don't really know the answer to that. Um, what okay, it's all right. If you don't know, you don't know. I was just curious if it was yeah, kind of... Yeah, I, I already would... that, That's interesting. I'll find that out. I'm sure Tiger would know. Um, or uh, yeah, I'm sure Ty would know the answer to that on how the other towns work it uh, on this. Because if other property. towns, if it's just passing through, it might be considered town land and they just own them. Whereas ours. Oh, they, I see. Yeah. They, yeah, they have constructed the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, how does Tomage Hill work too? Is there like a Tomage Hill Tom fund? Hill, yeah, Tomage Hill, everything other than the platform itself is ours. Mm -hmm. So that is, yeah. So um, that, that's where it gets into a little gray area if, with this parking fund, because I'm not 100% sure that you can use the funds in this parking fund, uh, even for platform stuff, again. Right. That makes that sense. I'm not, I, I can't really speak to that, but again, questions that I could answer for you next time around. Okay. Um, my, my own question is uh, for the banking transaction fees, why was it $31,000 and 23? Oh, it's so much more than 22 and 21. Um, Good catch. There, uh, I'm trying to think again. There, there was. I, I, I really, I think it. There was something with it that it really wasn't thirty one six thirty five. Again, I, I can't actually remember where that actually came from, but it was uh, when I went over the budget. It was recommended to reduce it and forgive me right now i can't bring it to uh, recall what that reason was again okay yeah, because because it, it's going from like 500 yes. thousand yeah. and then it bumps up to 31 and then even for the for the the 24 budget it goes up to fourteen thousand, which is yeah. high, way higher than yes and there, there was this reason to it and Again, forgive me. I will get that answer for you, but I can't recall when we went over everything. 
um, what the reasoning behind, but there was something right. there was something that was explained to me, and I'll get it for you. But generally, that just seems kind of crazy, right? I mean, is that just literally for no. running a credit card? Mm -hmm. It, it, it caught, banking and transaction fees are extremely high. You know the machines, the apps. This is this is right. this is what it takes to. Maybe maybe some of our commuters are uh, directly profiting in their positions yeah. at some bank somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll you know I'll get that answer for you. Um, Oh, and cool. and would that I'm, I'm just curious if in the parking platforms you're looking into is is the transaction part built in or down is that... as well. it will be broken down okay. uh, yeah i have to split that as well so um you know so at, at, at the outside service contracts i break out the tickets from um that was given in the railroad and i break it down to be taken out of um the railroad accounts so the outside service contracts as you see in the railroad account so okay all right so that's basically a brief overview of um you know the parking department and the budget um that just shows you know a little bit about the history of the parking department and what our goals are, what our challenges were, um, you know, what our future objectives are, um, the performance indicators are on the bottom, pretty much, you know, kind of self-explanatory here. Um, so Stacy, I have a question. So you're, you were down two people from pre-pandemic. Yeah. What were those two people doing for you that you don't have now? They were enforcement officers. They were enforcement. They did the enforcement. And so net net 2024, sorry, 24, 25 budget, which just got approved or is in the process of being approved, forgive me. You're have a tiny increase of when one percentage point or <laughs> something like that. Say that one more time. What was your what's your increase in the budget? It's like one and a half percent or something less than two, I think. Yeah, I, I tried to keep it. I tried to keep it less than less than two. But it, it's virtually the same. It's it's. It's virtually the same. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. not, and actually, some of my accounts did. Uh, we did were able to reduce some of the accounts too. So bring it down to a little bit more. I try to keep it as flat as possible, if I can. Okay. So. It's I've been managing, so that works. And that's that's the budget. So I will get those questions answered for you. And um, next time around. Okay. Next item. Question. And then back to Nancy. Agenda. Hold on, I'm just pulling the agenda up here, so I don't have it in front of me. I should have printed it. You want me to it. tell you what's the yeah. next? So it's, uh, we've gone through the agenda, uh, rather the budget. And so the initial, the, the additional discussion was simply to talk a little bit about um, that Jeff Speck uh, talk. And mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, um, Drew, were you able, did you go to it? Or it sounds like Kevin was there. I was there. Yeah, I, I was watched there. it on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was I was one of the organizers of it. So yeah, oh, okay. I think I think we got a good response. Um, yeah. We talked a little about it. the tiger mentioned some of the things. There was a breakfast following the day after where some of these uh, ideas were talked in more detail. But you know, there's uh, hopefully there's going to be a committee kind of based on that breakfast group that will, or like a working group that will kind of follow up these ideas. So it's not just, um, oh, I thought that one was a great idea. It's, more, right. it's kind of systematic, or maybe they take one and say, let's try this one thing and that everybody kind of has consensus around. I do think, um, you know, the, the Main Street uh, parking thing, I think got a lot of uh, like, 
head nods and uh, also the the main street and the east uh, sort of um, width or the length, I should say, of that crosswalk. That, that yeah. corner there is problematic for pedestrians. So um, doesn't necessarily impact parking directly, but it might if there's a resolution to that they come up with that everybody can agree on. Um, so anyway, I think overall positive stuff um, where I think, uh, you know, they're, they're obviously repaving the lots. One of the ideas that Spec suggested was, you know, multi-use on some of these things. But, you know, we've, we've all been complaining about the, the, re, the, the condition of the pavement. So, you know, this this could be a temporary repavement until some other ideas come in for redevelopment. Uh, it's it's kind of it is what it is. Um, it's sad because it's money that you know if things do change in five years, say or three years or something, then it, it's. But uh, I think we've got to do something. As as um, Tiger was saying, it there they're becoming physical hazards some of these lots um, and the pay and the, and the paint has always been an issue for us so mm -hmm. um, anyway um, yeah curious what you guys all thought and uh, yeah. I thought the um, I mean this really doesn't have to do with our commission but the traffic calming by removing um, the, the traffic lights was it, it made a lot of sense, you know. Yeah. Instead of speeding up toward an intersection, you're approaching an intersection with caution. Um, makes sense. So I guess that's yeah. why he was saying he could look at the tested on Park Street there because that's not uh, that that four way intersection is not a state road. But the one you know where Morse Court is across from the library. Right. Well, right. Say, and that is just a horrible corner anyway. Um, right. Yeah, so so that would be the, that's the sticky one for us because it's the state road. But right. I'm looking forward to him testing what he's going to test on the four-way stop, I guess, it's, was it Cherry and Park? I thought, uh, uh, I thought it was, because isn't Cherry, I thought it was, did he say, I thought it was Park and Elm, but maybe I missed, miss, I thought it was uh, I, I I couldn't remember either. I thought I thought it might have been uh, Cherry and Park as well. well it might be um, Cherry yeah. because Park oh, yeah. and the one way street might make right. it. Yeah. Okay. There's it's too much been... going on there. Right. So the Cherry and Park, basically that corner where uh, the old post office um, is, uh, you know, which is now Merrill, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be good because then, depending on on you know what that shows us, it gives us some some evidence to go to the state with and some mm -hmm. and, and try to try to remediate that that other corner. Love them to try a test at uh, Weed and Elm too, uh, because those flashing lights <laughs> don't do a lot. Somebody right. at the breakfast. Somebody at the bre breakfast was elderly gentleman was pointing to that uh, <laughs> and had a, having had some close calls um because people just barrel down weed um but i guess the most controversial thing for us and this is not something that's on our radar uh, it's not controversial amongst the planning community but you know uh paid parking for downtown that's pretty much where everybody's headed and you know i kind of agree with it but tough to implement but maybe that could be in our in our future <laughs> at some right. point once once we get all these improvements made which i didn't well, I even realize we're happening yeah that's what we need to do oh. is get the improvements done and then we'll be in a, a much different situation so i was exactly. thinking about that as he said it and i thought you know maybe for some uh, maybe you know one side of the street is paid and the other side of the street is shorter term so you could still accommodate people who want to run into a store but they don't want to pay premium parking to run in and get the wrap gift at the whitney shop or what have you so yeah i mean there's lots we could do with with time times as well loading zones you've recommended anyway 
we're going to be in a different spot once these lots get repaved and the pump outs get done and then the, the, the main street thing happens that could change a lot mm -hmm. that's huge yeah. because that i mean i think the businesses down there would really benefit from that additional parking yeah, yeah. agreed okay all righty well then the last item is uh your report stacy yep um so basically you you guys have had some questions for me uh last time that you asked if i can look into one of the ones was to see if you guys had the authority to reduce uh, the parking fines for the tickets and we had the question reviewed by the legal department and they did not recommend that the commission undertake reducing the fees based on your legal authority. So the fees, you either would be able to just uphold the ticket or um, avoid the ticket. That would be within your purview. Um, Tiger touched on the Starbucks. Like as he said, we started with the, the two signs that's a start to let people know that they're not allowed to park on the sidewalk. And it looks like he's looking into the handicapped spaces and everything like that. So we're moving forward with that. And that's a great step forward. Um, Drew, I think you had a question, something about the iCloud services that some of the other commissions might have it so you guys could share your thoughts and everything. And I asked several people and the commissions don't have any type of sharing capabilities the only people that they have the tablets so they can share between themselves would be the mm -hmm. board of selectmen the town council the board of finance you know but they have their own like tablets that they can share between you know the other members but there's nothing you know any kind of service that, that's offered to the commissions where you can share um any other way so i looked into yeah. that well, I guess it's it's really up to to Nancy, the chair, <laughs> how she wants to uh, organize the, things. Yeah, well, no, and I think and as so a, that's a, and and I will absolutely be there to to help her and and get any information you guys need or request out to you. Right, and that was one of the things. I mean, we did attach the there was that FOIA call. Mm -hmm. I think at that point in in uh, January, and um, we did reattach those those. Uh, handouts to the emails for this uh to, for tonight's meeting um but i think and one of the things that we can say here you know is that as it relates to the commission and its communications um, you know among our, ourselves um and as it was explained to me when i met with stacy and and diana and tucker recently was that um you know it is based on a po political affiliation so and and a quorum so for instance it, the the quorum as it in in the composition of this commission right now would be Kevin, um, Katie, and myself. So we are free to talk as a quorum. But then, as it relates to the other members, you, Drew, and Marley, you and I are free to talk one and one on one about whatever it is we want to talk about. So so that is my understanding of how the communications can kind of move forward on a less formalized basis re relating to any concerns, questions, what have you that, that may arise the outside of our normally scheduled businesses, uh, rather uh, normally scheduled meetings. Okay, but uh, <laughs> anyway, we're gonna proceed as normal for, um you know, distributing materials, right? Just right. through email. Yeah. There's not going to be a folder anywhere. It's the yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. You no. Know, nope. Because you could keep Sorry, your own I folder. <laughs> I have a folder. Yeah. I'm happy to send you what's in my folder. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. And the last thing, just to bring up, just to keep you guys updated. Um, so we've been monitoring a lot since we went through our renewals, and I'm talking strictly about the lumber yard lot. And consistently, we have seen even on our busy days, there's at least 100 spaces open 
that lot still is not um, full. So basically, um, in February, I notified 60 people off of the wait list. Um, just to give you a brief overview, 27 said yes, five said no, and I got 28 no responses. They were told they needed to notify me within a certain time period or they would be taken off the list. So those 28 are, have been taken off the list. If they want a permit, they need to reapply. I just made another 40 notifications. Um, as of today, I have about 12 that said yes one that said no, and I'm still waiting on people they have until Monday to notify me that they want it and to also bring in their application. After March 11th, which is next Monday, they will be taken, any no responses will be taken off the list. So I am moving down uh, pretty significantly um, and pretty quickly. So, you know, we do have several, um, interested people. Usually when the notification blasts go out, everybody that really wants it will get back to me. Sometimes I'll see the blast go out and I'll get somebody back within about five minutes. So there are people that really want it and they will get back to me right away. And then it will slow down as the days go on. So just to give you that, that update, after Monday, uh, I'll reevaluate, see how far down I can go and I'm just gonna keep moving. So that's why I estimate more permits to be sold. And uh, as of this last group, what did I just tell? 189 people left on the wait list. I think we're on to two. So let's get to. So. And that's all I have for you. So. Thank you, Stacy. I think this was a really productive and informative meeting yeah. and yeah. before we end the meeting however you still have to vote on that appeal the gentleman did not show up and again i did put down as for your recommendations that you would like them to appear if they're appealing a ticket so it is up to you all to decide on that appeal so we still vote on it. Even yes. It. Yes. Yeah. But I, I wanted Tiger to get in because he had a lot of information yeah. to give you. So usually we handle this, the voting at the end of it. I'm unclear about that. So I, my understanding was that they had to actually appear in order for that ticket to have been to be voted on. Um, um we as the, the over the years it wasn't mandatory. We had tried to actually, and that's why you saw that on the bottom of that form, we had tried to get people to appear because if you're appealing a ticket, you really should. But then it reverted again back to, okay, they don't have to, um, we'll just vote on what was sent in. But um, I do believe if you look at actual state statutes, it says that if you do not appear, it really is, I can't get the exact wording, but an admission of, of guilt. You're not, you're appealing a ticket, so you have to come and state your case. If you right. don't state your case, then you don't have a case. So, um, but again, past. Because that's the, the way past. it is with speeding tickets and such. Yes. yes. Right? So it's the same idea. If I don't show up to appeal my ticket, then I just am going to pay my ticket. Yeah. And because you are the hearing authority, I believe you do. You can say we need them to appear. If they want to explain what happened, uh, why we want to hear it, then. Yeah. Well, what do our, what, what do other commissioners think about this? I mean, he clearly was parked in the handicapped spot. I mean, I feel bad for him that he like lost his job, but I mean, you really can't park in the handicap spot. And I do have to say, Stacey, the pictures are really, really good quality compared to some other times. Yep. So we right. can thank the officers. But well, regardless of this particular ticket, I think the bigger, the, the question is, how do we, the commissioners present, feel about the idea 
of people who have gone through the you know motions of writing an appeal, but the fact that then they are not present to actually appeal it, does that immediately you know um, you know abdicate their their appeal and we uphold the ticket? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you don't fight for it, like I think you're you're gonna we're gonna basically say that you clearly are breaking the rules. But we have in the past, like, voided tickets for people who weren't here. Right? Have we? I don't. I, I, I do believe you, you have. Yeah, I think, I think we have. That, but that, we, that we could have practice with the, the, the parking session where um, you voted on the written appeal even if somebody wasn't here. It was always best to have somebody here, but. Mm -hmm. hmm. But we but we could decide to have that be, you know, our practice going forward. Where yeah. I think where I stand is like, if, if something's obvious, like their appeal has merit and we're is, is, you know, super on the bubble, you know, um, and they don't show and we want to sort of say, their appeal has validity. You know, we could, we could, if we feel strongly enough, we could do it. But if, you know, uh, if they're if they're not, I don't know. Well, how do you how do you want to do it? <laughs> I'm I'm kind of agnostic, I guess. But there may be some times where it's like, well, you know, like, like the Starbucks thing. Like yeah. I, I don't want to. I want to have the right to have another Starbucks vindication. <laughs> <laughs> I um would like to get Marley's input on it, I guess, as well. Um, yeah. You know, and so maybe we, the, the larger question of, as a commission, are we going to uh, simply uphold any ticket that is not otherwise represented at the, at the meetings? That's something that I think we need to table for next month. So yeah. we can- Can make an exception for if they, um... I mean, if they appeal and they have a conflict that they stayed up front, I can't yeah. be in a meeting because. I, I think that would be absolutely good. acceptable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but we need to be very clear. And, uh, you know, you added that language at the bottom of your email or whatever it was you said you had done. Um, and, you know, so maybe just review that and, and, say if in fact if there is a conflict on the on the scheduled date you must inform us um so the bottom of this gentleman's email he it said you have to you must there. appear at the meeting if you want yeah right okay so if that's the case i mean i would be inclined to uphold this ticket anyway for the reasons that kevin had just detailed that it is a handicap spot it was very clearly marked the photos are very crystal clear it is unfortunate his his circumstances, but we, we can't um, we can't make an exception. And he's not here to appeal it, so or explain anything of End that. Story. I vote in favor of a pulling ticket. Any I second? second. <laughs> I third. Okay. Okay. What about hold? Okay. All right, great. All right. Well, this was a marathon meeting. It is now 9 p.m. on the dot. Yep. Thank you. Please. Welcome, Katie. Hey. Yep. Motion. A motion to adjourn. I True. Second. Kevin adjourn. seconds. We are adjourned. Okay, have a good night, everyone. Thank See you. Thank you. Have a good, good night. night, everyone. Thanks again. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey.